Ladies and gentlemen, the 1992 Kennedy Center honoree, Paul Newman. Mr. President, Mrs. Clinton, honored guests, Sydney, where are you? <laughs> Smile. Gotcha. Sidney Poitier and I did a picture together uh, about a hundred years ago. And I discovered he's a very private person. It's hard to know if a private person is your friend or if he's just less private with you than he is, let's say, his rowboat. <laughs> Actually, the film we did was a film called Paris Blues. It was a jazz film. And Louis Armstrong was in it. Louis spoke of Sidney with hushed reverence. Louis said, this guy cannot keep a tune. <laughs> he cannot find the beat. He cannot finger the saxophone. But look at him, he sure fools me. <laughs> We all play many roles in our careers, and Sidney has also had to play the role of social pioneer. It was a role he did not seek, but no one could have filled it better than he did. It's hard to believe that it's been 50 years since he's been on the stage, but his work since then has been a pilgrimage of startling grace. He has not only made films, he has changed the face of film itself. Of course, in all of these years, he has not learned how to play the saxophone. <laughs> and if Louis Armstrong couldn't do it, I don't think even you could, Mr. President. <laughs> but aside from the saxophone, Sidney, you are a superb example for all of us. Tonight, we salute you. And to put it in the simplest terms, you are one serious, delicious kick in the rear. Well, you're pretty sure of yourself, ain't you, Virgil? Uh, Virgil, that's a funny name for a nigga boy that comes from Philadelphia. What do they call you up there? They call me Mr. Tibbs. Cat Island, Bahamas. It was home. No electricity, no running water, and an eight-mile hike to the tomato fields the family farmed. He was the youngest of Reginald and Evelyn Poitier's eight children. Loose-limbed, good-looking, and an inch away from trouble. His parents sent him to live with a brother in Miami. was clearly marked, he said. He was stunned by the strict separation of white and black. He bought a ticket for as far north as his money would take him. He arrived in New York with the clothes on his back. He slept on rooftops. He took what work he could get. Then an ad caught his eye. Acting, he thought. Now well, it couldn't pay less than washing dishes. The director of the American Negro Theater was aghast. You can barely read. Your accent is impossible. You're wasting my time. He bought a radio and for six months listened and listened, studying voices and polishing his speech. He failed a second audition. Then let me sweep up in exchange for acting lessons, he said. The company took him in. An understudy, there came the night 
he went on for the star. A producer saw him and cast him in a Broadway show. The part was small. His presence was all they talked about. Three years later, he was in his first movie. His talent was never in question. But would Hollywood have the courage? I walked onto the back lot, he said, and the only other black face belonged to the shoeshine boy. He stood alone in the light, raised himself to his full height, and he compelled us to listen. All I want is to make a future for this family. All I want is to be able to stand in front of my boy like my father never was able to do to me and tell him that he'll be somebody in this world besides a servant and a chauffeur. Huh? You tell me that, huh? In one groundbreaking performance after the next, he closed the distance and stepped firmly into movie stardom. The first black actor to carry a film. The first black actor to win the Oscar in a leading role. I'm a Baptist. I don't go to mass. Well, how'd you get there before I came along? We walk every Sunday. Now we got you. Now, damn it! You ain't got me. Good night, Schmidt. Now, get that very strange. And cut that out. Bless you, Schmidt. He made his boldest strokes with the fewest words. In the meanwhile, you just killed yourself a white man, just about the most important white man we got around here, and picked yourself up a couple of hundred dollars. I earned that money ten hours a day, seven days a week. Colored can't earn that kind of money. Boy, hell, that's more than I make in a month. Now, where did you earn it? I'm a police officer. He left no doubt in the roles he chose and the words he spoke, exactly where he stood. Dad. <laughs> Dad. You're my father. I'm your son. I love you. I always have, and I always will. But you think of yourself as a colored man. I think of myself as a man. Whether behind the camera or in front of it, it was not movies he was making, it was milestones. he stood alone. Today, Sidney Poitier stands as the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, Louis Gossett, Jr. You know, I had the distinct privilege of working with Sidney Poitier, or as we affectionately call him in New York, Sidney Potter. <laughs> in the film and Broadway production of A Raisin in the Sun, he had such a large influence on the male members of the cast, especially the way he walked. He had if you've noticed a kind of a hip first kind of, you know, walk, he'd come. <laughs> All of the male members of the cast began to walk and talk like him. Well, I don't walk and talk like you anymore, Brother Sidney. But I do follow in your footsteps. I have in my life. You've never steered me wrong. 
I salute you. There is another generation of young people here that want to salute you too with a song that I think that you might recognize. And the song is from Lilies of the Field. Greetings, Mr. Portier, from the voices of the next generation. You have been an inspiration as well as a great role model to each and every one of us, and we'd like to congratulate you on your Kennedy Center honor. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, James Earl Jones. Sydney established the height to which we actors must go. He brought and extreme integrity to his career and to his place in society. And once he set the height, he left it for us who followed to establish the breadth, especially African-American actors. So whatever the rest of us do, it will always be true that Sidney proves the ideal. So Sidney, much of what I am as an actor, I owe to you. Thank you, Sidney, for all of us. There's a simple song that Sidney Poitier learned as a child on Cat Island. The two words of the title describe the man we honor tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, to sing that song, Miss Jessie Norman.
than when 